Hello, guys, and uh, welcome to the Field EU, the finale of it. You know, we hate to see it go, man, but we're happy to be here for the finale of it, at least for now. And, uh, of course, starting with the European version of it, I'm Shope, and I'm here with Spooks, and I'm excited to bring the first action here to you guys today. A good day, everyone, from me, and uh, so am I, Shope. Right now, we have an interesting matchup going on. Just a bit of waiting time still with uh, Project Aversion and two Sims and one Furion. Very interesting names, to say the least. <laughs> yeah, we definitely have some uh, some very interesting names coming on here in this lobby. But uh, the guys lobby up. I know we've had a little bit of some issues here, but we're finally ready to go, I believe. And I am super excited. I think just to update you on the format uh, here on the stream, I believe we're going to have a couple of best of threes first for you guys, maybe two or three of them. And then we'll do best of fives the rest of the way to finish out uh, uh, the bracket, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to look to make sure that that's not just for tomorrow. Um, but either way, it, it's going to be awesome. A lot of these guys who really have made, you know, made some good money and made some names for themselves here through the field, especially in Europe. And they're going to get a chance to show themselves out on an official rival stream here to close the whole thing out. Definitely. And, of course, this won't be the only match we're looking at tonight, but... It seems to be having some uh, exciting names still waiting for each other. And I think one matchup that we most likely will be seeing a little bit later is Damage Inc. against YouTube Space, which has a bit more of a familiar names to each other, I think. Yeah, I, I definitely think so as well. A little bit more familiar with that. But of course, all of these guys, high, high level players, high bubble level to even above. So uh, you're going to get very, very quality competition here as we go forward uh, for today. But I'm super excited, man. I can't really wait to get into this. I know we've been waiting uh, for a little bit, but I think that if the producers are ready, we can go ahead and probably start getting looking to throw it into the first game pretty soon. And uh, I know that's what we all want, man, is to see some quality Rocket League action here on this Good Friday. Definitely do. And I think uh, we're going to have I and mean, we're going to see more than enough of it tonight and i believe tomorrow as well we have enough streams going on tonight and enough games to keep you guys set up for the entire night really you won't have any problems enjoying the rock league for tonight no not at all and uh yeah I, i'm pretty excited about this so uh, we'll see here looks like the lobby has been done and remade and again we're going to be going for several hours today i think at least uh four or five hours of streaming here for you guys so plenty of action and then bringing it back tomorrow for the finales of it so uh, uh again lots of field finale rocket league action you know we hate again to see it go but uh we're really happy that we're finally going to be able to get a big well-produced production here for the field to at least send it off and you know maybe uh, if one day it eventually ever gets revived or anything similar gets revived, we can use this as a template. But right now, uh, here we are just sending it off. Definitely are. And I hope we can set it off with a big bang. Because personally, having done a, quite a lot with this thing and having coached people in it, it's it was an enjoyment for the smaller teams at minimum. We enjoyed it yeah. a lot. Being able to play against the higher level teams, being able to be in the same room pretty much as those teams i think everyone that is a little bit on the lower side of the bubble scene or on the crisp of joining the rlcs level yeah. really enjoyed this yeah i'd, I'd say so it was really a, an ambitious project that i think for the most part has worked out well and i think especially you've seen a lot of these guys uh, uh take full advantage of it and speaking of taking advantage of it let's get right into it here game starting out project diversion versus two simps and and for Turn on the Starting it out pretty okay. strong here. Nice 50-50 towards yeah. the middle, and Stink Master's going to be able to pick that one up. Street comes around. He's got a coaster towards the goal, but it's going to be just a little bit too soft mixing. to sneak past that last yeah, man. The little green and well, if we can start off with a coaster pin straight away, then it's going to be an exciting match. Bungie looking for the shot. Doesn't get it past the defender, though, and a good start from both sides. Clearly still warmed up after a, a nice bowling match in the pre-warm-up. <laughs> Seems Punky <laughs> looking for his solo play. Can't get it past the defenders. I don't hear the game yeah, trying to see if they can find something here. Now, uh, maybe a chance. Vela is going to come around and ke keep this one up, but a good 50 50 out towards the uh, middle. And Timo plays mind. this then back, but he plays it with a missed touch. Jake, just too slow to beat the last defender there to that ball. Could have been a goal. And you can see both teams kind of going with long attempts back and forth. And Timo somehow squeezes it in. Oh my lord, I wasn't sure this was going to be able to go, but Timo just speeds it through. 
We get our first goal of the night, and what a goal it is. A good solo play by Timo. The fella almost there. Very close and very painful to not see that ball bounce out. You've seen those just get pinched completely gone, but this time around, it seems that the two Sims and one furry team has uh, gotten their lead and looking to make a second one. Getting it into the center, but a bit too high for anyone to catch to it. Bungie, looking for a solo attempt, gets it off the ceiling, still has the flip reset, looking to get it past the defenders. Doesn't work out, and Jake is, has to now solo it on defense. Yeah, trying to solo it here and see if he can get something going, and now Project Eversion trying to take it across the side. What a cutout on that pass by Berchi right there. That was a pretty uh, ambitious attempt passing across the mid in your back half, and now going to be cleared out to the side where Bear is going to take it up to the backboard. Timo, he plays a back pass to Screamaster. I'm not certain he intended to do that, but either way, it kind of worked out. Of course he did. That's that's what we're here for, right? They, of course, intend every single touch of the ball. It's what they all wanted. It's exactly how they planned it. This one goes on the backboard, though. Looking for a follow-up. It gets a bump, a great bump there from Barretschu, who clears up the goal and gets that second goal for his team. Yeah, that's phenomenal stuff right here. Clearing out the defender, Jake, and the ball just comes in low to the middle of the goal where the, the space is. And you're going to get a second goal here for two simps and a furry. So uh, what a name, man. Uh, if this team were to take it out and, and go the whole way and win the field, that would be something. Uh, that would be great. But they're starting off really well, having some good offensive pressure. Just two shots, but all of them have been on target and in the net as well. Looking for that third one, but this time they can get a counter Ooh. attack going. Bungie looks for the shot. It gets put high and Jake has to slowly get it to his teammate. Fella looking for the center once again, but there is only Bungie there, but it was a bit too late. And the offense dies down slowly. And slowly and surely, you can see it transitioning a bit in favor of the blue side. Yeah, the Project E version here, I right hear, is they're doing a little bit better job trying to keep uh, uh, everything up in front of them and, and keeping the ball up close. Whereas before, it was two Simpson, one Furry using their speed and kind of creativity to create some plays and their ability to adapt to even missed touches that, that allowed them to score two goals. Uh, but finally, a little bit of pressure coming the other way for blue side, but it's not going to matter because Barrett is going to be able to pop this one home. Timo goes for the double, but does, runs out of boost, but that just leaves it for Bear over here in the corner to find the angle to that upper 90. What a snipe. Great placement. But you know what? I'm now curious about who, which ones are the Sims and which one is the Furry. I'm, I'm asking <laughs> that the important questions here. That's uh, that's why they pay you the big bucks, man, here at Rival, to ask the tough questions that everybody is asking about. I, I was going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> Who do you think are the Simpsons and the Furries on this squad? But uh, we're going to have to figure that out here soon as Scree takes it. And, whoa, that's a nice little pop there from Vela to stop this one out. Bungie's going to miss this one. This one could be dangerous. Timo plays this over to the side to Bear. Bear up to the back. We're just going to waterfall down, but Jake reads it well. And two Simpsons and a Furry right here are doing a really good job of just kind of controlling the pace of this match. Spooks, you know, I've, I've seen them take, uh, you know, most of the ball and just play incredibly quickly and, and loose and freeform. And you can kind of just feel the amount of fun they're having in their play right now as a fourth goal comes in. It's just like you say, it's so much in control. Like this touch by Barichu, what an incredible way to get that ball high and still in control as well for yourself. And it's just... The offense is clicking, whereas for Project Aperso, you have to look at something to do differently because you have had only one shot. That's your entire stat tree. No one has done anything apart from that one shot. I think that there might be something wrong right now with them then. Yeah, so it looks like we've had a video stream drop here, so we're going to have to radio cast, and the ball's coming towards the net, bouncing right in front of that right post there as Bertu comes from the middle to the right side to cut this one out. Ball screaming across the middle and now up towards the left above uh, the boost pad. And this one's going to go straight towards the net from Bertu, who's been really all over the field today. And Scream Master takes this one up high towards the middle of the backboard, goes for a 50. The 50 attempt is missed, but it falls to the post. It's still hanging there, Buggy. He's got it on him, and he carries it out over the top to get rid of the pressure. But right now, again, two Simpson, one Furrier just controlling most of the match. Well, it almost goes wrong there, right there in the defense. A little bit of a mix-up, but it seems that Screamizer has taken control, going high in the air, get the flipper set off the ceiling, looking for the musty, but 
not quick enough to it, but it's still two furry, two, two sims and one furry still in control of this match. And with only 15 seconds left, really, there is nothing else you can expect from the other blue side anymore. Bungie looking to maybe get one, gets it past one, but still not on target, not close enough. This ball brings into the center. Can it finally get okay. a shot on target? It's on target. It's off the crossbar and out. And even near the end, when you expect it to go in, still nothing. Yeah, still nothing right there. I mean, that was close. We definitely saw some uh, de uh, some chances that looked like they might be able to go uh, for their team, but blue side there didn't look like they could really ever capitalize on them. Two Sims and a Furry were doing a really good job of controlling most of the match. The shots, and we can see on the counter here, two total shots for Project T version, and uh, <laughs> to what is that eight for two Sims and a Furry? That fifty percent on their shooting percentage. So. Uh, really just kind of domination right there of the match, just a little bit faster than than the, the blue side there. Yeah, definitely. And it's just the controlling, the, the nature of this team. It seems that like two Sims one Fury, like you said before, is having fun. And it, you can tell it. Everything they do, every movement they make, it's all just very freestylish, but like just so much more just having fun, be there, be there to be ready. And you start to notice it against Project and First Year, we just isn't ready for it really at this point. No, not quite ready for it. No, uh, but, I mean, there were some moments there that we saw from them where I thought that they had a good answer. Um, and, you know, for the most part, that was uh, when they had a little bit of possession, when they were able to get the ball to the backboard, um, when, you know, it, it, they kept two Simpson and Furry on their back foot. But for the most part, those times were a little few and far between. I really only saw about two extended possessions from them during the game, and the rest of the time the ball was in their half. I definitely agree, and so we are trying to get underway to game two. I'm just going to be curious what Project at first year is going to change in their playstyle. What are you going to bring and show us that's going to be different? Jake looking to start off well, but just misses the ball. Bella looking to get it onto the right side, but Bungie gets damaged for all his trouble. Barichu gets it on target. Is this a great start once again? No, Jake gets it onto the side. Takes a tiny bit of control, but can't get it past Screammeister. And it seems that straight out of the gates, once again, two Sims and one Furry is once again just very much in control. And oh, yeah, Ooh, that was a tough there one from Bear. Scree's going to be able to finish that one off, Spooks. I'm sorry to cut you off there, but man, I thought he used his flip to get back to that in time, but unfortunately couldn't get that front end of his car around it. But it doesn't matter. His team is there to clean up the play. I do not mind at all because even I thought. Oh, that's not, he's never going to get that. He's not going to get that second touch. Nope, Baruchu clearly does have that second touch and shows me that I just cannot be sure of this man because he's just going to do things I don't expect from him. Jake, getting the flip reset, not working out, and Fella tries to get some offense pressure going from Project Aversio well into the center, but the only one right there is Baruchu getting a clear to Timo, looking for the shot on target. Is this the oh. second? There it is. Yeah, this is that chaotic playstyle that we've seen here from Two Sims One Furry that that have really allowed them to dominate this game really quickly towards the net. And Jake has to make a save, but he's a little bit past that ball. Has to make a soft one, and you just commit so many people up. And, and, and this blue side of Project Diversio, they, they've not really had any kind of answer uh, to that, to, to just popping the ball forward and going at it and relying on your speed to get there. And uh, Two Sims One Furry has taken full advantage of that. It reminds me a bit of a very young Team Queso side where it's just, you can see they don't care what you try to do. There is no care in the world for what people think. They just do what they want to do. And it seems that Two, two Sims on Furry is very much in a similar path that they're taking right now. Yeah, they are. And you're going to see right here around the outside, Parachute's going to try to get this to the middle. Unfortunately for him, he's not going to be able to quite get there. And Screammeister is going to take this up towards the corner and right now again it's just that game of just this atricious possession these guys are wearing out project e version right here they're, they're keeping uh, these guys low on boost and back in their half their form has to be falling out of whack here as they get three people committed into the and... corner a demo on the goal and i mean you know I, what, what else can you do there spooks you've got no boost you had to commit so many people to this corner just to try to find this ball. Now everybody's out of position. Jake gets demoed as the only person back that maybe even had a chance on that, and I'm not even sure he would have saved it had he not even been demoed. And it's just really, I mean, right. two Sims and a Furry are just kind of completely dominating uh, all aspects of possession in this match right now. Yeah, I fully agree. And it's just 
what can you do? Well, I think Bungie has the right idea right there. Maybe get some demos in. Maybe get some disturbs in place in. And if there, if three of them is too much for you to handle, maybe make it two of them or maybe one of them even. Get some people out of your way because right now this is just a very tough matchup. And Barry Chu looking to get a second goal himself doesn't work out this time around. Well, gets hit to the side. There is Cream Mice. They're also looking for a second. Everyone on the two Sims and one furry side has a goal. And I think all of them would like to make it a second goal for themselves. Yeah, I think so as well. And it looks like Project Evers will try to go for their first goal here. That's a chance, but it's cut out by Timo coming in from the back side right there. Fading away, swatting that ball out to keep it from going into the goal. And I think right now, with two and a half minutes left, I mean, you still technically have a chance to come back. But the way that these games have been going... I think if you're Project Virgil right here, you have to just be looking for a, for a shot towards the net. You want to be able to get one for the road, and there it is, Vela. Going to be able to put one in. Going to prevent uh, the perfect you're... shutout here for two Simps and a Furry and maybe start a comeback. Yes, finally they find the back of the net, and finally they find some well, missed plays by two Simps and one Furry who have been very clinical. So to see those mistakes happen, I think uh, Project Virgil is very happy looking for the second one. Gets hit to the side by Scream Meister, but it seems that a couple of tiny holes are starting to appear between the two Sims and one furry. Maybe some disturbance plays over who is able to sim for what eagle. <laughs> I think that might be it. You think they may have uh, accidentally sent for the wrong person right there. And, you know, the furry right there is not going to help oh them out too much. But Bertu is going to put this one through and into the net. And so now... Uh, back with it, a three-goal lead, and, you know, it looked like there might be some trouble there for a moment, but this is just a cheeky little play here from Bear to be able to get around the ball and just sneak it in that near post before the defender can even get there. Yep, and just as we start complimenting a team, uh, they, of course, like always, get that. Never Whoop! mind. Never <laughs> mind. My goodness, what a pass. This is a great 50 towards the wall right here. Comes right back into the blue half and Bungi. He's just going to be able to trust his teammate right there. And I think that's what you have to do. Bella puts the pass right on his nose as they cheat out to get to that one. And with 140 left, down two goals in uh, uh, your bracket life, at least on the winner side over here on the line, I think that you have to be willing to take some of those risks like that. Yeah, definitely, but I was just going to say, like, oh, yeah, it's the typical thing, cast of scores, and then here we go again. Can I speak for five seconds? It seems that every time I open my mouth, someone finds the back of the net. Yeah, and it's been an answer every time for two Sims and a Furry right here. I mean, within 15 seconds of Project Virgil scoring their first goal, and you're going to see this one go straight into the net, just beating everyone out. And I talked about taking some risks a moment ago, and that's exactly what this blue side was doing right there, cheating all the way up the field, trying to get an early 50 and a half to keep possession up, but comes back to bite them and now approaching the minute left mark, but finally we see a little bit of momentum potentially going blue way. Potentially Project here is going to be able to find something towards the net, but they're going to have to do it quickly as Vela takes it up. He's got a lot of space here, not a lot of boost though, and he's unable to finally reach that ball, but also going to miss the corner boost. I was going to say be able to get the corner boost, but Two Sips and Furry shuts that down too, and now they have a counterattack going to 2v1. But avoiding the demo and getting a nice 50-50 on the ball, a great challenge right there to keep that one out of the net. Yeah, fella bumping screen, I saw he couldn't challenge. It seems that the physicality is coming out a tiny bit now. Fella doesn't get it to the center. Maybe Jake can. Looks for the center ball. No, she looks for the shot. He does get it, but it's not enough to get past Timo. And it seems the offensive power is finally showing a tiny bit from Project Virtio. And this game is gone. 20 seconds left, it's gone for you. But it's very nice to know this into the third game to maybe get that reverse sweep going. Oh, I think we're just a best of three here, though, Spooks, right? So I think this is it. I, I believe this will be this one for the game right here, and Bungie's going to throw it towards the net. But unfortunately for him, it's going to be a little bit too little too late. Now, it's not really the way you want to start out your day. But again, preventing... I think that the, the perfect shutout in both games and, and keeping this one alive is they're going to give oh. up a goal for the road here. Uh, but I think good sports on both teams. We saw the ability for them to kind of play together and have fun with each other as they were warming up for the game and getting the lobby ready, right? You definitely see something like this is just impressiveness. Two Sims on Furry takes this game as well, and it's just the sportsmanship is there definitely, as you saw it in the pregame, but... I just want to point out how impressive this was from Two Sims of Furry. And I think we are going into a game three. 
So it looks like we're having a best of five on our hands, which just makes this more exciting, I think. I'm not completely sure, though. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think I think the schedule had said a best of three, but I'll wait for the producers to make sure that we have the, the actual right info on that. But right now, uh, yeah, two Simpson and a Furry, even if we go into the game three, they're, they're a team that looks like they're going to be pretty tough to beat here. It definitely ends. Uh, if, if they go through, then good job for them. We have seen probably one of the most fun team name we have in this entire tournament. Make it through. Like, there is no other way around it. This is probably the most fun team name you can have ever. The <laughs> fun uh, is one way to describe this team name. It's not necessarily the adjective I think that I would describe it as, uh, but <laughs> either way, we're going to go with fun for now, and uh, uh, they're moving on. And but I mean, you know, you, you talk about fun, and that really is the name of the game here for the field for now. And you can talk, you can see exactly how much fun those guys had uh, playing right there. It was it was very uh, a high paced play style. It was a fun to watch play style, and it was one that relied on just so many creative opportunities and your speed up the field uh, to to create openings for you. Yeah, definitely, it's an exciting team, and like I said, they remind me a lot of the team Quasa side that we have in RLCS right now, where it's just. They do not care where you are. They just do what they want to do. And I love that type of play. So if you can keep that up and keep perfecting that a tiny bit more and more and more and just show to the world like, hey, this is what we are able to do. This is what we can do. And this is what we're capable of. Then it's it might just be a fun team to watch out for and names you might want to be uh, remembering into the future. Yeah, and it looks like we had a lobby crash right there, as it is going to be best of five. I was a little confused about the format here to make sure, but it's, it's going to be upper bracket here, which is where we're at right now, all best of fives. And the lower bracket's going to be all best of threes until losers' finals. So I, I knew we had some best of threes on the schedule. I just figured they'd be earlier in the bracket and earlier in the run. But right now, this is going to be a best of five. So we are going to go into a third one here uh, with these guys. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful – that uh, Project Versio right there can bring this back and, and make it a little more competitive. And they started some steps towards that by scoring goals. Problem is you can't give up six. No, you can't. And uh, I do have some hope they might be able to bring this back. And if not in this series, maybe you lose this completely. But then you go down at least with a better feeling into the losers round two where you're like, where you know... I'd, we just got clapped, but we got goals. We felt we came to offense. We finally found our groove a tiny bit again. And that's probably what you are going to be looking into, getting into that groove, getting into that feeling of, we can do this. We're not a bad team. We just got a bit overtaken by a team that's just all over the place, where you probably for a team that's looking to read the enemies a bit more, it's going to be impossible against a team that's just doing the stuff that two Simpsons and Furry is doing. Yeah, it is. And I mean, I think, you know, to, to combat this kind of play style, you've really got to interrupt their rotations because uh, two Sims that are free right now, are, they're they're relying on, and I've talked about this, their speed, right? They're, they're trying to push up the field and, and control most of the game uh, with their speed and being able to get back and get to the ball. But if you can get like a demo or a bump or anything like that on this, uh, uh, you can really make this a lot harder for these guys. Uh, um, and, and, you know, when you throw that rotation into whack on the way back, you can oftentimes find some openings and get a counterattack going. But right now, they're being so oppressive that it's hard to find those openings. And definitely, and especially with the, just like you say, the speed, it's just so much speed. And it's, I think probably the worst part is for Project the First Show is that two seems not very, the entire game through, has just been comfy. If just sit there and be like, I'm... Like, they have a nice neck pillow around them. They're getting a massage going. Everything is just so comfy for them. Everything just feels so... Like, yeah. Not even planned out, but they just are in a good mood. Yeah, it's very fluid, man. They're having a lot of fun with the way that they're playing the game. And uh, right now we're getting the lobby test in to see to make sure it's good for this game three, which could potentially decide the series. I think that everyone's going to agree that it's pretty fine and they're going to get ready to get this going pretty soon for you guys. But... You know, again, like like you said, we've talked about it. It's a, it's a team that is enjoying the way they're playing, and those kind of teams, as I'm sure you can attest to, are sometimes the ones that are the hardest to beat. Because when you're enjoying yourself, you tend to be playing your best. If you have a smile on your face, you have that grin going up and up and up, and especially if the goals that have been scored, how can you not? But yeah, it's just like you, you start playing well. And I think almost everyone that has played Rock League for a, a lot of hours can attest to this. The second you know you start feeling good, you start hitting the stuff that you know you can, 
and it's in your head and everything starts working around and everything that you want to do is connecting. That's the moment where you're, as a team and as a player, you're the most scary because right. everything is working. Right. And when everything's working right and everything's clicking the way that you want it to, um, it, it just makes things so much easier to, to get going. So um, we'll we'll see if that keeps up here. You know, a little bit of a break could throw off their form a little bit. You know, I mean, t- tell us about it. How when you're when you're playing a game like this and you have to have a break due to a lobby going down, does that ever affect your gameplay, especially when you're on a form like Two Sims that a furry was? It definitely slows you down a bit because you're in the mindset of, all right, we can keep them going, keep them going, get it going. We can play like this nonstop through. But you have this disruption right now, especially with a uh, re- server reset. Because in the RLCS now, you have the timeouts. Those you're not, you're not resetting a lobby. You're not checking if everything is all right. Now you generally have to move your car again, and you move it in a way different way. And as we get game three underway, I'm very curious if Two Sims and One Fury can do, like we say, keep this momentum up and keep this play style up. Yeah, I'm excited to see if they can do that here. And uh, we're about to get the answer to that question as we get into this lobby and get this game three, which is so pivotal, started here. Definitely game three. Most important game of the day for especially for the Versio, because if you can't come back from this, you're going to the losers. And for two teams and one furry, this means that you're qualified if you win this one. Screammeister. I think we got the center, but it gets hit to the side, and Jake has a follow-up to it. Can he get a second touch? No, he can't. And the ball gets put onto the blue side once again. But he does get a touch, but it's not the most nice one you would have liked. No, it's not. It's not exactly what you're looking for, but right here it doesn't matter as they're going to stay away from any damage. Three masters going to throw one towards the net. This one towards the middle here. Timo sneaks it past one defender, but Jake is there on the back end. And uh, this has been the answer that Project Versio's had to have is challenge one and have one man back. And, you know, while you talk about that being good fundamental Rocket League, uh, when you're having to commit two people to every shot and to every ball, you're going to have a hard time getting it out of your half and getting anything going. And this is probably the worst thing that Project Virtio has right now is that touch from Bungie. He's hitting it up to look for a pass, but there's no one there to connect to it. No one is there to follow it up. While on the other side, Two Simpsons on Furry most of the time is not even looking for a pass. They're looking for a play on the target. They're going for solo attempts unless they can't do it at all, like this time around, where he's looking for a pass. Let's get it, but the demo coming out. Bungie looking for another one. Doesn't get another demo, but Jake. It's a really big hit, and Bungie, once again, he's on a warpath. He's looking for demos all around. He really, <laughs> he really is, and uh, you can see that now. It's just trying to break open this defense, and I think that's one good way to do it. You know, uh, It's often talked about by casters, but the, the fact that Rocket League has become such a demo-heavy battle, but you're not going to need one here. They just don't have any boost to get to this ball, and it's looking like a completely different Project Diversio team now scoring for the first time uh, first in a game, and just unfortunately, I don't think they're going to be able to get to that one. I believe it was Timo on the back end. And it was the, finally a lead for Project of First Year, but probably what most people didn't see is that Bungie, once again, was there again to be demo happy and be bump happy, going for a low hit. Doesn't get it past the last defender, and now it's finally to Simpson Mont Furry that has to chase behind this. And we talked about how the break and how the reset might affect them. Well, so far, it's affecting them quite quite heavily because uh, Project Versio has the lead now. Bungie onto the side, does get a teammate to catch it, but a big, huge clear is going to be hit to the side by Barichu. Screammeister looking to follow it up. It's onto the orange but he has no boost. Does get a second touch on it. It's on the backward. It's a bit awkward. Jake does get it. Timo is there quicker than anyone else. It's on the backward once again. Three people are in the same spot, but eventually it does get cleared. That it does, and Vela here, he's going to take this up towards the backboard. Jake, trying to confuse me with his color scheme, I believe. Is that the bronze or the gold decal right there that he's running? Making it look like he's on the orange team every time I see him on my screen. But either way, he's going to be able to stall some time out here for Project Versio. And now a shot coming in, and it's going to be crossbar down, and Bertu, who has been... Uh, you know, to me, I think the standout player here for this two Simpson and a furry side uh, has created most of the plays or scored the goals. He's had a very high goal participation and coming through once more. Yeah, he's, he's just showing some good power right now and flexibility in this. But now comes the important question. Is he the furry of the team? You know, I feel like it, <laughs> but that's only because he has the word bear, which sounds like bear, like the animal in the front of his name. But uh, if we if we get an interview or anything like this with this team, I'm going to have to ask. 
uh, who it is. Or maybe it's one of those things where it's a rotating uh, role, right? Like maybe uh, one day you're a simp and one, one day you're a furry. Be a very exciting thing to happen. And Bungie, once again, <laughs> I, I think Bungie is just going for an exterminator uh, batch and the fella is helping him as well. The demos are definitely shining through. Maybe they've listened to us. When I said they needed to get some disruption plays going, Timo gets it down to the midfield. It's a great pass, but Jake saw it coming. And Pyrotube getting into the midfield once again. This is a great touch. It's going to be very awkward. And this or is a pass play. Over. Oh. <laughs> Almost works out for them. Looking for the pre-jump passing play of the backboard. This time around, it isn't there. This is a good shot. Fella gets it out. And you can see two Sims and Bonferi is back again to the just the awkward and weird plays that they feel comfy with. Yeah, that was something that was interesting right there. I really thought that one might end up going, that that uh, infield pass down off the back wall. But either way, still a tied game here and the closest one we've had of this series. You talked about the reverse sweep potentially starting, and this is the way that you want to try to start it off right here. Tight game, showing that you can stay in it and just clawing your way back into this series. And we're going to see if Project Reversio can do that as they have some possession, but it's cut out towards the goal. This is going to be tough. Boost is taken, and Bungie just punts this one away. Uh, but two steps of they haven't looked like they've had the presence on the field that they had there in the first uh, a couple of games, right? Their, their pace is slowing out a little bit. The passes like that one are going to places where there aren't people. They're really starting to lose a little bit of a feel for where each other are. Oh, oh no! no! Oh. Yo, Jake. <laughs> I held my breath because I wasn't sure what was going on. And Vela, he does get a touch, I believe. Yeah, he does get it. And it's an incredible touch with Bungie. It's the post. Those should be in, but thankfully for him, there's someone to clear it up. And as like I said, it seems the two Sims and one Furry just isn't the same team that we saw before the before the break. And it seems the Project Capricio is also not the same team we saw before the break, because the team is so much more aggressive in just pushing up and being in your face. Yeah, that is. They're a team that really is pushing up and being in your face and has a chance here. Four seconds left. Can they get overtime trying to complete the sweep or have a chance at it? But the reverse sweep looks like it's going to be started. The ball is going to be up in the air. There are some people around it. Can Jake kill it? Yes, he can. He gets his car on top of the ball. That's the way that you defend that. And great stuff from them. And Project Conversio, this is a team that I was starting to count out a little bit. This was a team that didn't look like they had quite enough life in them in games one and game two. But they're able to come back here in game three and really show a whole new team. A team that really, like you said, went for those disrupting efforts. That, that created a lot of space on the field by going for bumps, by going for demos, and not letting off the gas. Definitely. And it's just that the switch around. It's so impressive. And it's probably one of the most important things you need as a team to be able to switch around, talk with each other. I, we have this break now. What can we do to do this different? What can we do to bring out a win in us? And even though it was incredibly close, they felt they weren't being controlled anymore. They were finally mm -hmm. doing stuff mm -hmm. alone and being able to create opportunities a lot more. Because Jake alone has had more shots than they've had combined in the first two games. Yeah, he did. And then finally the pressure was there and able to put some away. And uh, you, you love to see it for the team, man, to, to finally get some clicking going. And they really held to two Simpson, one Furry down to not a lot there in that first one. I mean, you could see the scoreboard, uh, not a lot of ball touches on there, not a lot of save attempts really or saves that really came in or and really only the one goal. So couldn't get as many shots on net that were really threatening as they'd like to. And I didn't see any of the bump plays that we'd seen from two Simpson Furry that had opened up so many goals for them. So uh, just a completely different pace of match there where Project Diversio came on and was able to, to kind of secure that win. Definitely, Fella. Getting into the side, getting a good start going, looking for the midfield pass, doesn't get it. Just got the flip reset. Timo is there waiting for him, though. Falls into the center. It's a bit awkward. It gets hit onto the backboard, and Jake is there to follow it up. And a good start from Project Diversio to get some offensive prowess going. Fella, can't do much else with it, apart from taking the boost. And Screamers are going high, and... Doesn't get it past Bungie. Once again, it seems the Project of Persia has fully changed their playstyle and is now looking to get onto the offense once again. It's a good shot. Gets it aside. Bungie. Oh, it's backboard and not enough. Not enough just yet. And yeah, I mean, looking at these last two games, you would think that Project of Persia might be the team that's up to you on right now. They're the team with the momentum that uh, you could see two Simpson and a Furry had early as a great save coming out by Bear 2 as he has to come backwards on that one. Really just trying to stall his boost out to get there. 
now this one's going to be cleared all the way long, and Buggy is waiting on it. And you can see the uh, onslaught here from Project Versio. They're getting so much pressure and so much ball presence that it's making Two Simpson and Furry have to wait to get some boost and allows Project Versio to get all the way back, pick up these back boost pads, and then continue an attack later. Timo getting a shot on target, but Jake is waiting there. But Jake gets demoed for all the trouble he gave. Screamizer onto the pass to Barju. You know you can't trust that man. He's incredibly dangerous. Does go for the side. Gets it into the midfield, but there's no one there apart from Screamizer because Bungie missed the ball. It's a dangerous ball, but Bungie eventually does follow up on his own touch. I'll get to put into the center. Fella is there, but it's a bit too high. And Barju misses uh -oh. the ball as well. I think the nerves are co coming to show a tiny bit for two Sims one furry. And that comfy nature they had in the first two games is almost completely gone. Yeah, this looks like a completely different team. You can tell by the way that they're, uh, really their car language is, the way that they're coming at balls, they're getting themselves in positions a little bit too close to the ball. They're not playing as fluidly and uh, rotating around to, to the back sides here and, and making sure that they can keep that momentum going forward. You're seeing them slam on the brakes a whole lot more, killing a lot of that speed that they had. And uh, they just really can't find themselves right now. But so far, keeping it even here in this game three, so they're going to have a chance to find it. The Project Versio is just going to try to keep on uh, this oppressive nature that doesn't allow them to get that fun styled offense up but bear you all oh, the shot gonna be blocked twice by jake great job by jake that could stay with the ball and get it scream eyes looking for the shot on target gets it down to the side not enough just yet barajou the one that is has been dangerous and you're waiting for him to wake up and be dangerous again a good pass into the midfield but it's not enough and bungie looking for the counter attack Dangerously, the ball bounces down. Fella is there, but it's not enough. It should not be enough. Timo gets it onto the side, and now the goal is wide open. Is he quicker than Fella? No. Fella hits it onto the side, gets the corner, gets the boost. And looking for a counter attack once again. These teams are countering each other as quick as possible. Yeah, right there. I mean, a little bit of boost in the tank for Timo, and Two Simpson Furry going to have the first goal of the game. But nonetheless, he makes a phenomenal save. And now the ball's still ping-ponging back and forth a bit. But it's not so ping-ponging as it is like long extended uh, uh, dribble touches or like control touches down the field as that one almost bounces off screen into the goal. Bertu going to shoot this one towards the net. Vela clears it towards the outside and Timo trying to keep it in front of him. But uh, again, you just see long counterattack like you described followed by long counterattack. Definitely. It seems both these teams are... Trying to stick to that tactic. Now two people are up for Project Diversity. Bungie is trying to do it. But he backs off smartly enough because he would have been the last person back anyway. And Timo has some time, but he backs off from this weirdly enough and it gives Jake a free goal to shoot at. There it is. It's 1-0 again from Project Diversity. And I don't know why Timo backed off, to be honest. I think he thought with the ball going up on the wall there that Scream Master was going to go up for it in the corner, but he didn't. And then, like you said, that leaves two guys in the corner, one man in the goal, and Jake takes advantage of that. And Again, this is a team that, you know, you we almost had written off after the games one and two. They were getting uh, really just beat to everything so badly. But get a little bit of a break between games three and four, or excuse me, two and three. And now in this game three and four, you're finding a full different play style, a full different team here, really on both sides of the field, but definitely on this blue side for Project Diversity. This, this is what differentiates the good from the mediocre, the ones teams that are able to adapt this quickly to be able to say, yes, we need to do this and this and see what we can do. Now it's time for two sims one furry to adapt no! this time. It's almost in there. It is it gonna, is he gonna no, squeak it right away? Oh. I was so worried. I was like, oh Lord, Bear, she's gonna have a chance, but he runs out of boost and pinches it all the way across the goal. Timo somehow all the way up there to recover for that and Bear turns back on this one to put it in, but man, my heart was breaking for this team right there for just a moment. Even then, if those goals in the beginning, in the first two games, you see them go for those and they have those instantly. No problem at all. And right now they're just struggling to get it in with three people going for it. That's a dangerous ball. Bungie has some control, does get it past one with the 50. Take a stare, but it's not enough again. It seems that Right there, Fursio is looking to finish this off before the 10 seconds are down. This ball goes into the midfield. Jake is there to follow it up. Has to do it all alone because no one is in the corner there. Spearmeister, let's get a huge clear going and maybe a last attack. Final push coming from the two, furries, uh, two Sims and one Furry side. The ball doesn't go center enough and it seems to be dropping down. Not just yet. Zero seconds. It's still possible for either team to take this game away. The ball is dropping down finally and it lets me drop down. Finally, some calm, relaxing time, overtime.
Overtime it is, man, and this is uh, a very tense and tight one as Veritu's going to play that one up. Timo, with that speed that we've seen before, back out, but Three Monster can't get to it to deal with it in time, and now it's just Veritu back. Vela gets played behind him, but the pinch off of the defender on accident. Timo gets the demo, but almost scores a goal here for Project Diversio, and now the ball towards the backboard. Not the touch you want. Didn't really get a touch, and Jake couldn't follow up on it. My lord, we were so close to a game five situation happening, and now Screammeister takes this towards the middle, and Jake is there, and Project Diversio is on the end of all of these touches from two cents and a furry. They're closing it in nonstop, but the pose has been a bit of a, a bottleneck for Project Diversio. This ball gets hit to Timo. Can he do it again? No, this time it's hit to the side. Not enough of a good touch coming out from either side. Urchu, can he do it this time? No, he still hits the same post that he's been hitting the entire game already. A final screamizer. Gets 50 as well. Urchu hits it into the mid blue side still. He has a bit of time now. The net is open, but he doesn't have a good angle for it. Gets saved by Bungie. Now miss coming out from screamizer. Timo keeping it into the blue side. Trying to stay on offense. Keep the pressure going, but. It's gonna be tough, especially with the fake from Bungie. Jay looking for the center, does get it to Fella. Look at me. Ooh. Game five, it's not enough. Get saved by Virtue. It's for still in overtime. It's over a minute and 30 almost. Yeah, right here. This is uh, starting to look like it's gonna be the length of a five game series, whether or not we get to game five. The way this one's going, Virtue trying to stop that. Bungie plays this down. He's up towards the wall here. Screammeister. Towards the right side of the net there in Vela. He's got some time now as the demo comes in on the back end, but he takes too much of it. And Screamaster repays the favor for his team and gets Vela out of there. Decent 50 from Bear to, to buy some time, but Bungie is there towards the middle. And you can see both teams right now sort of stalling out in the midfield. Neither one really getting any kind of uh, presence in the other half besides into the corner where it's immediately cleared out. Getting it into the blue side, Virtue is going to look to take control of this one. Gets it under the backboard. Can he follow it up himself? No, he gets damaged for his trouble. Screamer is looking for the pass, but Timo backed off. He didn't trust it enough. And it's still a bit of a boom ball situation right now because both these teams don't want to fully commit to it because it can be detrimental for both these teams. You don't want to be on either end of the losing side. Bungie gets into the center and Jake looking for the follow up. He is, and Scree's going to cut it out right here, and that's phenomenal stuff as Bear Street all the way to the backboard. Trying to find something going. Timo towards the edge. That's a missed touch from Vela. He accidentally flips on that wall, on a, uh, but it's going to not matter as they clear it out to Bungie. That one could have been very harshly punished, but instead it's going to be a centered ball from Jake who sort of clears it out of the center anyway because Bungie is not there. Still some boost on his way, and Project Traversio takes this to the midfield looking for another attacking chance. Timo to the corner. Jake's going to be there. He plays this one mid. Bear going to have a chance to challenge this one out towards the midfield. Vela with the shot. This is maybe a little bit high, but it's going to be touched by Scree all the way long and down the field in Project Diversio. No boost trying to wrap around behind it to get there is Bungie. But Timo with the challenge, and you can finally maybe see some cracks in either of these defenses, but no one has broken yet. And still seems to know what to fully commit. A couple of overcommits showing themselves right now. Timo getting it into the center for Barichu. It's not enough again because Vela is quicker. Both these teams slowly trying to inch themselves closer to the goal. Jake isn't fast enough. This is a good ball down, but Bungie, the unsung hero from Project Aparicio, in my opinion, has been there the entire time looking for a bump this time, but Veritu still alive. This needs the goal to no on open. Oh. Not enough. Jake gets it onto the side, but it's they have to watch out now. Jake, for the counter attack, it's not enough once again. These teams are inching so much close, and Virtue hits the wide. post, it's out! Timo looking to get it into the center, it's not enough either! And we're still ongoing, almost hitting the five minute mark now. Yeah, that is absolutely ridiculous, and I said we're approaching what looks to be like a game five situation, whether or not we get there or not, and we're about to have another full game's worth of play here. Virtue to the back, where Bungie gets it, and again, like you say, that unsung hero, Awkward bounce for Timo. He gets beat. The whole team is up. This is a chance. The back end is open. The shot is wide, and Bungie can't get to it. And oh my lord, Project Convergio is going to wish they had that one back. So the counterattack is on. Screamaster looks for the flip. He gets it. Awkward touch here in the back end. Can Timo get there in time? He can't put it down in the net. And both teams there with counterattacking chances that they just miss out on. Look for another one. Jake gets it to Jake. Jake trying to follow this up. Screamaster gets it to the side, and there is Virtue. 
Follow it up, Timo gets a good hit high just to relieve some pressure and does get a double commit from the Project of First Year side. Timo once again looking for a teammate. Let's get left over for Scream Miser. It's onto the backward, looking for the bumps, but again, no one there to follow it up. Barichu taking it high, trying to do something alone, but Bungie getting it to the side, relieving some pressure from the blue side. Now, Fella, put it solo side, but can't do it alone either. And both these teams, I think this might even go to 10 minutes if this is going to keep going. Yeah, this is going to be an incredibly long overtime right here. Uh, if something doesn't happen soon, as this water falls down, a chance. A very harsh commitment up. Vela, he sees Bungie staying there, and he's going to throw it towards him, but not going to be there just yet. Now a shot attempt. This might squeeze through, but Timo in the right spot to backflip that one around the outside. And now Scream Master, Meister here, 50-50. Still has some boost. Going to try to continue the attack, but well up on that one to clear it out. Our the project side throwing three men at that ball to finally get that one towards this orange half. Shots are not strong enough. Bungi looking to get this center onto a teammate. Does get a good touch on it. Fella is waiting there. Archer gets it to the side with a 50. This ball is back on the backboard once again. Screenmeister has to take a bit of control. Bait out Bungi. Does do that. Gets it past Jake, but there's Fella once again. And it seems the rotation from Project Aversia are finally showing themselves once again. Everyone is nonstop in a good position to get that ball that's tried to trying to get it gone but it's not working and this ball not into the center either not in the center just yet either and that's uh, gonna be unfortunate for them as now scream meister comes towards the net a chance and bear backs out of this one's gonna leave this for timo potentially but instead it's gonna be jake and jake solo play towards the net almost in but saved away at the last minute by scream meister and really thought we might have our game five situation right there but this game which will not end, continues for just a moment longer. Vela, no boost, no. gets it to Jake. Jake misses it wide again, and now maybe a chance for Meister to pop it up, but not enough boost on this two simps and a furry side to get the ball out and get the counterattack going. The goal was wide open. Bungie was the dumping all the defenders. They only needed to hit it on target, and it wasn't not enough for it to get it in a good spot for his team. Timo can't get to it. A big woman clear coming out. Barichu is waiting there though. Can he touch this? He does get it to the side. My goodness, that could have been it. It's just the precision is for both these teams a tiny bit lacking right now because of the pressure. They're both probably feeling it heavily. Screammeister can follow it up himself. And now Barichu has to be fast to Jake. Let's get it to the side. Is there a teammate to follow it up? No, mm -hmm. once again, everyone backs off real quickly. They don't want to be the ones that make that mistake. A demo coming out leaves the goal pretty much open. It hits the post once again. There's Jake though. There's Timo. What? How, how did he have his flip there? He was just flailing around. I think he may have gotten bumped up and he was able to make that save. And I can't believe it, Spooks. It was right there for them. And now we're at the eight minute mark. We're getting ever closer to that 10 minutes that you were mentioning. But Project Inversio is like the tide. They are creeping in slowly and surely into this orange half as they just take more and more ground. The ball deeper and deeper onto Simpson, a furry side. Bungie, though, maybe a little bit too deep with that ball. Plays that one out. Is there enough boost to get to it? Timo clears it out, gets some space for his team, and they're finally, finally going to be able to get some boost. But is this enough? Bungie does land down on it. Was incredibly dangerous. Almost on target. And... Now it seems that finally Project Virtual has to defend again. They haven't been there for around three minutes right now. Screammeister, if you get a follow up on himself, can't get it. And Bungie is there once again. Timo gets it center, but that ball is way too tough to get. Screammeister does get it eventually. Now it's a double commit once again. Timo can't get enough power on this, and Bungie gets the clear. It's on to Barichu, the dangerous man. Can he fin maybe finish it off this time? He gets no! it center. It's not enough. It's just wide. Bungie. A bit of patience, a bit of control. It seems that Jake has to follow up for him. Bella right there as well. Can't do it solo because he has no boost. He tries to be so as disruptive as possible. Gets it into the center. Bunky is there to follow him up. It's again the post. They are not precise enough to get this ball on target. Yeah, the, the nerves are definitely coming out in here with both of these teams hitting the post multiple times, not being able to get anything right in towards the middle of the net. But the, you know, the defenses have been there for them too. And, you know, with the way that this series started out with the scoring coming out from two Samson and a Fury, I did not think we'd be going into a two-goal, almost 10-minute overtime here. But that's the way that the, the cookie crumbles, man. It's the way it's shaking out. Jake gets it over the top, but Timo is there. To take it up over. He's going to get a second touch on this, maybe. No, he's not. And Vela clears it up high. And Screemeister is going to have to be careful taking it to the quarter here. 
and Buggy finally gonna uh, slow it down just a bit to give his team a chance to catch up. You're just waiting for that one person that is gonna stick around the offense a tiny bit longer. You're just waiting for that one person to be in that position to be passed to. Maybe this time it's Screammeister looking for it himself. Doesn't get the second touch and a double demo coming out between probably the two goats of this series in my opinion, Bungie and Barichu. This ball is dangerously on the backwards, a miss coming out, but Bungie is there to help his team out once again. Timo onto the side. My goodness, what a series. We've passed the 10 minute mark. How far can we even go? Yeah, this one is going for a very, very long time. Trying to make history right here in uh, uh, really the, the first official and, and final official broadcast for the field with the finale. And man, 11 minute overtime here in 10 seconds. Unless a, a goal screeches in right here, we're not we're going to see 11 minutes as this one's bouncing a little dangerously. Scree maybe has Timo. Timo gets the ball, but he had to slow down enough for Jake to be able to demo him. And man, Vela, no boost on that one. Just buys enough time to the backboard for Bungie to be able to get back on it. Timo gets a good touch, tries to follow it up himself, but again, the boost is not there. Everyone is slowly starting to notice that the boost is just a bit gone, and everyone's looking to see who's doing that. Jake gets blocked from his shot attempt, now Bungie trying to get it himself, Screammeister's in his path. Bella trying to get the center for his team, gets a good touch there, but Archie, of course, he's right there, Screammeister. He's quicker than anyone else, does get it into the center, but once again, no one there to follow it up from him. Bungie, onto the side for Fella. Can this be a center for Jake? No, he misses the ball. Now it's back and get into the center, and my goodness, this just keeps on going and going, and you're waiting for who's gonna make this mistake, who's gonna mess it up and allow that goal to be happening. Barichu looks to be the one to create this opportunity. This is a good opportunity for Timo! There it is! Finally, 11 minutes, almost 12, and we're finally done. Yeah, Project Reversia was really doing a very good job of controlling boosts. There was a time there when everyone on to Simpson and Furry had less than 20 boosts, uh, less than 40 combined between them. And uh, you can see that they were somehow able to still stymie that attack off, get something going, and then finally just put Timo in a position to score as we see 10, 15 points for Barrett and 1,000 for Timo in that game. Uh, uh, really just a dominant, or not not dominant, but incredible, crazy performance. I mean, 12 minutes. Uh, and good Lord, five saves, five saves, six saves. What a game, man. What? A, who knew we would start off like this? I, I cannot complain. As a caster, there are always two series I would like to cast. One that has an incredibly long overtime, or one that's a completely full sweep. And it's incredibly weird to see that this series could have gone either way. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, one of the ones that really could go either way. I mean, it comes out with a 3-1 sto scoreline. But really, I mean, if you add up all the game times we have there, there were two full <laughs> games of, of no score, really, <laughs> that should have been uh, just counted as as basically ties for both of those teams with a 12-minute overtime and a 5-minute regulation. That's 17 minutes of gameplay in one game. So, I mean, that's a full series. That's a full uh, best of five series if it's a sweep in one game right there. So they really just played a microcosm of the whole series, and it comes out with <coughs> the team that was dominant at first, two Simpson and Furry, taking that one away. Definitely, and it's just, well, for two Simpson and Furry, I'm, I'm going to be glad. We're, we're going to see them in the they, – they've qualified now. They've done it. Yeah. The, the beautiful name that is Two Sims on Furry. I, I, we still don't know who's the si who are the Sims and the Furry. We need to know this. So if they are there, let us know who is who. And we're going to be looking into the next match, I believe. Yeah, we're going to be looking for the next match. But before that, we're going to take a quick break here, see if we can get some things going and, and you know, work it properly, hopefully fix a little bit of the delay that I know you guys have been experiencing on the stream. And we'll be back to you guys uh, really soon here with some more of the European uh, field finale.